Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Uh, welcome to episode 164. This is the weekend edition uh, interview show where I get to talk to uh, the people out there making the knives we all love and find out uh, what's going on behind the scenes, find out who these people are. It's uh, Frankly, it's why I started the podcast and it's what I love the most about this show. Uh, today, we're going to be speaking to off-grid knives, Kerry Orefice. Uh, Kerry comes to us from California, and he brings us a very interesting blend of EDC and tactical, and that's that's really what drew me uh, to his designs initially. You know, I saw a couple of a couple of Warren Cliffy kind of knives in there. I was like, oh, what's this? Why have I not heard? Of so this was on uh, Instagram, and I just started spotting his designs a couple of years ago, and I got one in hand through a good friend of the show, Dave. Uh, this old sword, Blade Reviews got me an off-grid knives sea dog version two and uh fascinated by it and uh in like with it and possibly moving towards love uh i wanted to get in touch with carrie and talk to him about off-grid knives uh before we get to that i just want to remind you of the patreon page <clears throat> If you're so inclined, if you have the extra scratch and you think what we do here is valuable with the interview shows, the midweek su supplemental, Thursday night knives, the videos, uh, and the town halls, and uh, and you can do it and, and you're interested in it and you want to get uh, entered into a free, well, not free, <laughs> but a monthly knife giveaway, uh, go check out the Patreon page. That's it for the hard sell. You can look at the tiers and, and such like that. I do appreciate everyone who watches the show. You don't have to contribute in any other way than watch it and share it. Uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated. So in the interest of knife fandom everywhere, uh, in just one moment, I bring you Kerry Orefice of Off Grid Knives. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. Carrie, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. How you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Good, Good to have you here, sir. Well, uh, in my little uh, preamble, um, I mentioned that the thing that really drew me to your knives originally uh, were a couple of the blade shapes, and then I started paying attention to the knives in general and uh, what I started learning about them. Uh, but before we get into off-grid knives, uh, you know, as a brand and as your passion project, tell me about your love of knives. Are you a lifelong knife collector? How did you get into this, jump into this thing? Yeah, it. if, if I go all the way back to when I was a kid, um, you know, we all have that certain time when we first handled a knife. And uh, my dad was in the military. My uh, uncle was in the military and uh, they would give me knives at a very young age, you know, like seven ish, somewhere around there, Swiss army knife, simple folders, things of that nature. And, and I would use them, I'd get into them and I would collect them. And uh, you know, having that military background, especially my uncle, he was a Marine, um, who loved, you know, he'd come over and he'd slip me a knife and say, hey, don't tell your mom. You know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, eight. And so I would stash these away and, uh, and that was it. That's where it started. I love that. Don't, don't, don't tell your mom. Uh, it's it, as a matter of fact, today, uh, I have a daughter who's 10 and one who's five and a half. The 10 year old already has a Swiss army knife, but today two knives just came in for them. And I showed them, you don't get these for a while. But I'm putting these away. One's right. purple, one's teal. You know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you, uh, so your uncle slipped you a bunch of knives, yeah. Uh, and and those ignited a fascination that has led you to to now. What were the kind of things he was giving you? Um, you mean the knives that he was giving me? Yes, yeah. He gave me, uh, you know, when he was overseas, uh, he collected knives himself. And so it was Vietnam era and things like that. So it was Asian type stuff and uh, usually very um, simple folders and, you know, slip joint type, uh, backlocked type 
basics, uh, small ones. But then once I got the big Swiss Army knife, that's that did it right there to be able to pull out all the different blades and checking them out. And uh, so he really did that. And um, that was kind of it right there, bringing those the, the, the small folders. So the folding knives was always my my drive. That was it. Yeah. Well, so what was it about knives or, or if you can, if you can, as an adult speculate on what it was as a child, but because I went through the same stuff and I'm always thinking about it and coming up with new theories, but to you, what, what do you think it was that really drew you to the two knives? That's a great question. Um, yeah, you got to dig deep. No, <laughs> so it's it. I think when you ha handle it, especially at an early age, there is a fascination with it being used as a tool and bringing it out. I would go um, into the woods, like I would visit my relatives who were back East in Connecticut and there's woods and it was so different from California and I loved it. And so when I would visit them, he had all kinds of knives. And so just being able to handle them, bring them in the woods, you know, everything from whittling to just playing around, throwing them even, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to stick them to the tree, the whole yes. thing. Uh, that's it, there is this, uh, I mean, can we really explain what it is about knives that really makes us all knife nuts? I, it's tough. It's hard to really put a finger on, but it's there, you know? Yeah. And I think for each person, uh, there, um, it's like a, re uh, it's kind of like a recipe for each person. Uh, there are, or, or maybe it's more like our genetics. There's a certain amount of each. Oh, well, some of us, we all like its weaponness, but to, to a different degree, we yeah. all like the self-reliance you get from it to a certain degree. That's a we good all one. love how yeah. beautiful they are, yes. you know, but, but, <laughs> but everyone's percentages are different. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. hundred percent for sure. So uh, off-grid knives, uh, I, I read on your website that you started in earnest, or yeah. or I should say you you went all in in yeah. 2016 and decided to make this your living. So uh, set it up for me. Tell me a little bit about what your life was like beforehand and what that yeah. transition was like. Yeah. So, you know, I always knew I had the, the knife bug or whatever you want to call it, be, becoming a knife nut. And Really what happened was in the, around 1996 is when eBay started and 96, 97, kind of, you know, the internet started to kind of come out and you're, you're online. And that's when I, I started buying knives online in 1996. And that sounds like a long time ago because it is. <laughs> um, and so uh, it was amazing to me that I could go on there and browse and I would look at all these different knives. Now, you know, there's a knife for five bucks, you know, and I buy it and it would show up on my door and I couldn't believe it. I said, wow, that's, that was fascinating. So I always had this early um, introduction to knives and the internet kind of crisscrossing. Mm -hmm. And I got that uh, knowledge and then I would sell as well uh, through eBay. So I got the eBay thing going on. Um, and as I moved forward, then of course I had to do, you know, life things, normal things, normal jobs. Uh, and I did, uh, I worked in real estate, I sold life insurance, I did things of that nature. And it wasn't until uh, a friend of mine who uh, he designs car parts and car parts for BMW and sells them online. And I remember I said, he can't be making money doing that. And it turns out he started showing me little by little. He started showing me, oh, yeah, there is a whole world out there that you throw your line out there because of the Internet and utilizing the power of it. And most people don't know. You don't you don't know because most people don't sell online, but they're there. And so it just sparked kind of a thing. I said, this is something that I could try. And that's when I went and I started digging and saying, what do I sell? What do I sell? And I said, of course, I'm going to start designing knives. <laughs> so easy. No. And so I ended up um, uh, starting with two things. I started with two. Here's one of them. I started with a tactical pen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super simple, super easy. And it just got me in the door to learn how to sell you know, products online and, and things like put, that. And put that up that. closer. Sorry. Put that up closer no so I can check it out. So it's a, it's got the glass breaker on it right here. Mm -hmm. 
and then you would pull it apart and you can use it as a pen right so you could write with it and then you keep it on you as a you know as a weapon yeah and so it's lightweight easy to ship uh and it looks really cool and that's kind of where it started was this was really how to get me into how do i how do i sell online okay so that's interesting on a couple of levels one one of them is that uh, uh everybody knows that knife guys are generally pen guys and watch guys yeah. and flashlight guys or right. torch whatever mm -hmm. those nerds call it uh yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not so into the <laughs> flashlights, but I respect it. Okay. Uh, but pens, great entree. Was this how you learned how to use AutoCAD? I'm assuming you use AutoCAD or are you a pen and pa paper guy? Cause that's what I am. I'm a pen and paper guy. So I, you know, right now, and, and I'm, I'm going to keep going back to uh, utilizing the, the power of the internet with what, where we are right now in time is like the best time to be an entrepreneur it's right now and you have so much at your disposal do i know how to do cad no do i want to know how to do cad no i, I don't want to know here's what i want to make i draw it i and sometimes sometimes i'll cut it out into a life size i'll feel it and this and that but then i'll sketch it give it to the experts and then we work on it together but they'll tweak it edit it and then when it gets to the point i'll have it you know, a, a sample made. Mm -hmm. So right now you're talking like a producer, not an auteur. You're not the guy who's who's uh, writing the script and and developing it and then directing it and acting it and, and producing it and marketing it. You're the producer who's saying, "I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get this guy over here to direct it and we'll get this guy." To, you know what I mean? You're you're orchestrating yeah. the production of it, right? It's a different well, kind of. Yeah, and I've always I've learned real fast. I mean, you can spend, I could go try and learn CAD. It's too much time. It's time. It's money. No. <laughs> and what do you think about that? Well, I was going to say also, it's a matter of like, do you want to know CAD? Is that, is that going to be necessary for you to express yourself in no. this situation? Also, do you want to be an engineer? Do you want to be a designer? Um, right. uh, you know, so you, you have to decide what your level of commitment is in terms of the, the weeds, because you're going to be in the weeds either way. Do you yes. want to be in the weeds from up here or down below? Exactly. You're, you're just, you're streamlining the process. I mean, what's the bottom line? I want to make this knife. Here it is. Can you make it for me? How do I get to that end point where I'm holding it in my hand, put it out to market, and then ultimately do people like it? And that's, it's fun when you first launch a knife and you put it out there, you have no idea. I'll ask people, I'll let people test it and I'll get a feel, but do you really know? You don't know. And it's fascinating to, to then get the reviews. I get the emails and that's my driver when, when, and I, and I ask for it, I say, tell me, what do you think? Do you, what don't you like? What do you like? And once they, start giving me that feedback, boom, I'll make the change. And so a lot of my stuff has changed. Well, it's changed so much since 2016 with like a little, you know, little folder like this. I, this was my first knife that I sold. Mm. I still do. It's a, it's a, it's a super popular knife that people like. It's called the fat boy. And it's just a little, you know, simple folder with a, a liner lock uh, button that basically oh, yes. dis okay. that disengages it. So it's not like an auto or anything like that. So I would sell the, I sold this and the tactical pen online, but anyway, that that's the side note of, of where I started and where things have evolved and taking feedback from people and learning. And it's everyone's learning all the time. No, you know, I'm still trying to develop, uh, new, better ways, um, better knives, better quality, everything, better so shapes. You started with the two uh, product line. What's your product line up to now? I have like, um, I'll probably 30 ish. I'm in that range. And, you know, some I've, I've discontinued. So I've had a lot of lines that have come out and I feel like I can do better. And so even though they get great reviews, people email me and say, what happened to that? I said, I, I had to move on. And so I'll move on. And, uh, and 
that a lot of people say, well, why would you do that if that was a, a hit? You have five stars on Amazon. Why would you? It's just like a personal thing. I want to challenge myself, fire up something else, and and see if it can work. And that's kind of where it's going. And now I'm getting to a uh, a place. I don't know if you've seen this one. The uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the Rhino. This is a very yeah. popular one. So. You know, an influence that I really started to enjoy uh, early on in the knife, you know, when I started collecting knives, what really did it for me was like a ZT, a beefy ZT. That was yeah. it. Can, can said, you hold that back up, please? Yeah, sure. So, um, mm, yeah. So it's ZT ish, right? Um, big, ergonomic. And then, you know, I put my own flair into it. But, uh, you know, it's it's really a, a, a tough, hard use tool. And that's kind of what yeah. I'm trying to do with all the knives. I want them to be absolutely bomb proof, like totally bomb proof. So, OK, uh, and now I got a couple of thoughts first yeah. on on that knife. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, not in any way doesn't really look like any ZT, but it's that broad the broadness of the 300 series, you know, right. but, but you got a clip point. I mean, I don't know if you know that, but that's a clip point blade. That's and a clip I love point. that. Right. It's all clip. Yeah. I think it's cool. Yes. But, but you mentioned uh, discontinuing or um, reiterating. Um, and, and I'm, I'm curious about the life yeah. of this design, the sea dog. This, yes. this is the one that was donated to the channel. This is the version two. So, yes. Is this something you do? You like a design, but you're not living up to what you think your expectations are. So you, if it's good enough, you'll give it a version two. I will. And it, it, it's funny. It's, it's almost like an instinct. It, it doesn't have to do with sales. It, it more has to do personally. I say, I think I can make it better. I Ego. Think this, I think this could be, <laughs> I think this could be <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's that drive to make everything better from the whole company itself to the, to the products themselves. But this was the original. So it was a satin, mm. uh, finish, slightly different scales, uh, spring assisted where I went ball bearings on the new one. Good choice. So, so I'm moving away from spring assist. I don't want assisted. That was kind of an early on thing that I learned. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, and I prefer it. I don't, I don't well, want assisted knives. It's a savvy choice because people, you know, real knife people have drifted, real knife people, it's all true. the best people have drifted away from the, you know, the, the assisted. And every yeah. once in a while, um, ZT will come out with one. Uh, I can't remember the last one they came out with, but I'm always kind of like, really? Oh, okay. I mean, you know, because there's something pleasing about it, but, right. uh, I, uh, but I do prefer, uh, I love oh, it. I mean, this is just the action on this. Yeah. And, and it's called the sea dog and it's, it's definitely evocative of a pirate, you know, a swashbuckling, uh, but, but what a great EDC knife this yeah. is. So you talk about, you want your knives to be bomb proof. Yes. What do you see the use of them and how have you used knives in your life that you want uh, yours to be bomb proof? Well, uh, you know, my inspiration, uh, aside from a knife company is, uh, Yeti. Do you own any yeah. Yeti products? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I drink okay. out of them all the time. <laughs> right. And I love their company is amazing. They're fantastic. I love everything they do from top to bottom, all of it. And I just, study everything they do and of course i buy their products mm -hmm. but uh i want i want off-grid knives to be like the yeti the of, of the yeti world of the knife world right so you hold one of their products anything it could be the cooler it could be just a mug but you know you drop it out of a plane and you're good the thing will survive yeah. and i want that too with my knives i want people to pick them up hold them and be like "Ooh, let's take this camping let's go kick the crap out of it and they do. And the beauty is, is when I get the feedback saying, man, I put it through the paces. I tried to kill it and I couldn't kill it. <laughs> and so uh, and then I keep the price point low enough where, look, if you do crush it, I do offer a, a lifetime replacement guarantee. Mm -hmm. So that's good. But people aren't afraid to use it. You know, you spend three hundred dollars on a knife. Are you really going to beat it up? Eh, maybe, but doubtful. Yeah, is so, your name Rockefeller? Yes. <laughs> so 
what what I like is just the fact of handing something to you know someone buys my knife, and they 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 hold it in their hand and they go ooh one it feels like it's more expensive, they flip it they love the action they like the fit and finish, and then they go, I'm gonna go just go crazy with this and they do and they 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 work these knives hard use I know that term is used a lot, but that's what these are for these are truly for use and hard use you know okay so uh, i want to talk about the different tiers you yeah. have uh, because when you look at your website that's apparent yes. uh, but, but before we get there i just want to point a couple of things out about the design of this knife that resonate with me a well i mean this is a, a total matter matter <clears throat> of personal taste but yeah. i love the blade shape okay nice. uh but uh Secondly, the jimping is excellent and and effective. That's all. Yeah. That's all kind of window dressing. Uh, what I what I really like about this knife is a. I love that you've included a a, a glass breaker yes. because that makes me a lot more likely to use it in certain situations in my own life personally. This right. is such a nice touch, and and everyone needs to do this, but so few do. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, if you look at my receding hairline there and, and you, and you see how you do not see any screws or any protruding backside right. of the clip, yes. you slide this in your pocket and there's no interruption <clears throat> and the handle in, is big. You still maintain the three screws too, yes. which is kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, I intentionally made the handle, you know, you'll, if you, if you fold the knife up and you put it in, um, you'll notice that there's just this extra hunk right here. Yeah. Well, obviously sometimes some of the knives with glass breakers, the handles aren't long enough and you're going to punch your hand. I mean, so <laughs> yeah. one, I want it to be bigger and, and hold it in your hand. So, so that one, you don't have to deploy the blade. Obviously you got a strong grip and look how much is there. I got a lot. Okay. That's, so I wanted to, I, I have this knife out here on purpose. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was carrying this today, but it, it occurred to me. I did a, a, a glass breaker video where I tested glass breakers on the knives that I have that have them. And this is before I had this in hand. Okay. Uh, and uh, they all did great. But this one, you know, this is a Troodon mm -hmm. and it's the regular size. It's small. And, and I had gloves on, but I remember thinking as I punched through the glass, I'm like, this is a little, that's a, that's a little, uh, a little tight, a little close. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something I noticed with this uh, when I got it in hand. And, and I don't like it like this. I like it reversed with the blade yes. nestled yeah. in my palm. But yes. that it gave me uh, not only distance, but uh, a bit of mass down there. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that back spacer. And the, the whole thing's got that back end weight that, that can do damage, yeah. not just on glass, you know. Yeah. So you got a problem. <laughs> Noggins. <laughs> that's right. So uh, something you do on this, before we talk about the tiers, uh, something yeah. you do on this knife that I generally don't like is that secondary lock. But, okay. but yeah. Like, yeah. like the only other knife uh, in recent memory that I like the secondary lock on, which is uh, the Cold Steel Luzon, which is an XL, you know, one of their giant. Uh, it's, it's on that side. It's on, the, it's on the clip side. It's not the show side. So it's, okay. it's kind of out of the way. Right. Uh, both visually, but also in terms of where your thumb is and how your yeah. thumb moves around. Yeah. And because it can be a valuable add on. It, the, it, in, the re yeah. I can tell you the reason I did it. Okay. <laughs> I was getting emails, believe it or not, of people. Why don't you make the frame lock? The, the liner lock could break. And then they started talking about that as it, you know, there's always some. So I said, I did the research and there's not many that, that do it, but some do. And so um, I call it the gridlock um, and I added it and pe so you kind of, it's a mixed bag. Some people love it. They just like having it there so that, Hey, why not have it there? Right? Well, this is, this is what I'm saying about how yeah. you do the secondary lock. A lot of people do a secondary lock, the but the way side. you do it, it's small, it's unobtrusive. It's on right. the other side and you have to deliberately engage it. Right. And, and, and that's when you need it. Otherwise right. you kind of forget it's there. Exactly. And that's okay, good. That's, that's good how feedback. I prefer it. Good. You, know, good, you nice. look at the uh, CRKT locks, L-A-W-K. I can't remember what that stands right. for. But that's right on top. And sometimes it's spring loaded. So you have no choice. And it's right there. And you feel it. 
here right. it's kind of a forgotten thing until you need it. Nice. Yeah. So uh, when you go to your website or yeah. you look at your uh, IG page and you see the different products you have, it's it becomes very apparent that you have tiers of of products like this yeah. knife I keep talking about has OS 8. I'm yes. not sure if it's made in Japan or if it's just imported steel from Japan, but this is obviously on a more uh, value uh, level. It you is. have you have some knives that are titanium, you know, and uh, different different materials. Tell me about how these things are differentiated. Yeah, and so when I started um, early, early on, right? So I started with the Fat Boy, and and I've actually made this one bit a little bit better. I upgraded the materials, but early on it was just basic steel, right? And I didn't even care. I just wanted to, you know, see if it will sell actually. And, and then I ended up upgrading it and making it a little better. But OS8 is that middle of the road. You can make it super sharp, but you can also sharpen it quickly. It's a very mm -hmm. easy way. It's, it's quick, it's sharp, but it, it gets a absolute razor's edge. Um, and so overall, I wanted to just keep everything low. Keep all prices low, as low as I can make them, just to give them as uh, spread it out so I sell it to more people. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, people start emailing. Why don't you use titanium? Why don't you use M390? Why don't you S30V? And they just start hitting me. I said, Would you buy them? Would you really buy them? And so I said, All right. So I dabble with so, but I didn't go all the way to the top first. You know, I I jumped up just a little bit. Um, so we have the lower tier say 30 to 45 dollar range right and then say 45 to 79 or 89 and then you jump over the hundred dollars so i try to keep things under 100 bucks mm -hmm. um and then once you get in if if you jump up like the black mamba i showed you earlier so we have the titanium and then um i use the um where is it i don't know if we can focus on the m390 yeah, anyway, it's very small. So I, I partnered with We, the We Knife Company, and they make my Elite Series. Mm -hmm. And so I started with the Black Mamba. This was my uh, a design I made very, very early, and <clears throat> I shelved it. It, it, it was something I was going to do in the future. And I said, why don't I make this into a super uh, high-end, super high-end, you know. Mm -hmm. So titanium M390. And I made it legal carry. We're in California, and that's always on my mind. People always talk about that. What about legal carry? So I made it under three inch blade, and it's it's a tough little sucker. This thing, uh, it, it'll work. This will work, and people love it. I just reloaded on them and uh, worked with Wee and got well, a whole new batch of those. Let's 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 open that up and put it up to the camera, Jim, if you don't mind. Go wide on it and. Tell, tell us a little bit about this uh, this design and yeah. what it's a... I, first of all, my favorite blade shape, and I'm, you know, this is almost a worn cliff, but it does bend up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I call it more of a, a reverse tonto. Mm -hmm. So people call it different things. You know, blades these days, they are kind of, they, they, they shift around. It's not easy to really classify all of them. But anyway, I love the reverse tonto. And so I wanted that. I, I just, this up here does serve as a jimping, but I really mm -hmm. like the look. So that was a design element that also doubled as a function. Um, and then uh, I always like to do the deep, deep carry. Yeah. So that's automatic. I still don't understand why companies don't go deep. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me let me ask you a question. Two questions. Yeah. Uh, hold up the deep carry. You you have the you have different screws on that or a different setup. Um, yeah. Are you planning yeah. on doing this sort of flush setup with that? I, I yes I will and I'm going to start to do that on everything because that is a that's a big thing people talk about that a lot it's it's you know what it's not but it's it but it's one of it's, those little things that once you've it matters yeah eventually yeah. it does it. eventually it does for um, sure Yes. And and to me, it's never a deal breaker. But to yes. me, I see that I'm like, oh, that's impressive. Yeah. Now, <laughs> when people have used this, no one has ever mentioned these screws being a bother ever. Mm -hmm. Not on this model. So wait. Okay. So another thing before you put it away, I'm sorry. Can yeah. you hold it, hold it up so we can see the spine of the blade, uh, on both sides of the jimping? Is it alternate? Uh, so like, hold it so that we can see the spine straight on. Like, yeah, like that. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. So that those little divots in the spine yeah. really could definitely. I mean, that's how. Uh, uh, that's that's how a lot of blade companies used to do jimping before jimping was a thing. You know, just those little kind of divots on the on the blade. Right. Yeah, spine. yeah, yeah. That looks uh -huh. beautiful. It's like file work. It's kind of reminiscent yeah. of file work. Right. And it, it became kind of a design signature, you know, for the brand, you know, off-grid knives brand. So I put it on, this is the Viper, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And so I did it a little less pronounced, but it's there. And you can see it. One last thing. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you bring up the other knife real quick? Sure. I don't mean to keep going. I, I, I got a whole bunch here. Don't worry. Oh, good, good. <laughs> but but one thing that really has to be uh, highlighted here, and if you could push that, uh, flip it over and push it closer to the to the camera. Uh, what I mean is show me the lock side. You've got you've got that intense milling and all that pocketing on the yeah. lock side. And yeah. I love that. That doesn't happen. You don't see that too often. You'll see the milling, the complex, uh, you know, knurling and milling on the yeah. show side, and then you get to the, uh, you get to the lock side, and everything's yeah. flat and standard. And I love that you did. This is kind of like the five sixty one. What is it? The five sixty, the ZT. You know, that had all the beautiful milling on both yeah. sides. Uh -huh. uh, I, I gotta say, I, I love that detail, and it it might be something I wouldn't have noticed if you didn't do that. But right. the fact that you did that makes it more desirable. Wow, interesting. Yeah, nice. Um, so what what did I? Oh, I'll show you the. Um, so the other one that we uh, we knives did for us is the mm. Scorpion. So the Scorpion. So what did I do? I, I wanted to go another Elite Series knife, but I, it was it was a legal carry uh, blade, so it's it's significantly bigger right yeah what am i doing here okay. that is sweet so i wanted to make it big it's a basically a four inch blade another reverse tonto type hmm. blade i don't know i'd call that a clip point okay i'm gonna start <laughs> calling my knives clip points because <laughs> that's what yeah you're right you're right <laughs> um and so then of course to to just add a little flair i put some uh inlay some carbon fiber inlays um and you know we they they make such great stuff i've met with them face to face personally and they're just great people passionate and um i'm you know very excited that they make my elite series so uh basically on the same point as on the other knife uh, hold up the lock side on this one yeah you've got these beautiful carbon fiber inlays on the lock side too yes yes thank you is that so hard <laughs> i mean if you're exactly. paying i'm serious if you're paying premium dollar yeah uh from a great manufacturer why why wouldn't you oh this is just the lock side it doesn't need to be pretty over here right all right so i think that this is uh uh personally my favorite of your designs so far that i've seen is the scorpion yes and oh, and, nice. and because you if you've seen a few of these shows you know i trend towards the four inch and the more tactical when you designed this knife um uh, besides looking for something that was a little bit larger and a little bit different from uh from the two worn cliffy kind of things you had put out well w what about this knife what's it for you know it's it's a crossover i've had people tell me that they've used it you know camping the ones that aren't afraid to beat it up a little bit they'll take it camping they'll take it hiking they'll you know uh do some woodwork type stuff um and and use it as just an everyday edc type of situation but it, it really a lot of this comes back to i mean we all want a good looking knife mm -hmm. right of course it has to function that's important but we want it to look cool so really in my mind i wanted something that was kind of techy looking kind of it's got a lot of angles on it there's a yeah. lot of a lot of different things going on there especially the blade as well it's kind of hard to see let me show you uh the other version which is the satin version oh yeah so this will show you the the intricacy of the swedge up here <laughs> it's really a good looking blade you know yeah i'm a i'm a i'm a swedge whore and i love that swedge i love how it comes so much uh, up to the i'm sorry that's that was crass that was good uh daughters if you're listening <laughs> i'll tell you later uh that but but funny. the uh I, I like the way how I, I like how the swedge comes all the way up to the 
uh, the thumb ramp. I mean, to me, that's a yeah, that's a very beautiful blade. But I look at that handle, and to me, you called it angular, but it it also looks very ergonomic and neutral at the same time. It's not like yeah. it's not uh, uh, strong arming your fingers into any position. Very true, and I don't like to do that. Just bringing that up you won't see a lot of finger grooves on my grips. Uh, I mean, never. Um, the, the most that I've ever done is probably that, mm -hmm. and which is great. You lock in, you're good. I don't like to force people's fingers into the spots on the knife. I think you should be able to work it how you want to work it, you know? Um, and when you really lock the, the index finger in, you're in. I mean, it really, you know. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about this again. Um, I'm sorry, what's the model name of this? I'm terrible. This, one is, this one's the Rhino. I don't expect you to know. The Rhino. No, but I'm terrible with model names. But That's at least right. you have names and not numbers. That's yes, way better. I agree with that. So, so you were we were talking about ZTs before, and and I understand your 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 um uh, likening it to that a little bit in in the broad and kind of narrow, uh, flat and kind of broad and large and beefy. But other than that, okay, I look at this knife. And to me, it I don't know why, but it has some uh, uh, American Indian reference to it. To me, it looks like a scalper or some. <laughs> okay. Any, any sort of inspiration? What was your inspiration for building this other than, you know, uh, knives that you like that are of this general yeah. plan form? I, you know, again, pen and paper, pencil and paper, sketching away, erasing, sketching away, erasing and moving and tweaking. It's amazing if you, if I don't know how many people have done this, probably knife nuts have, but you do one little change on your design, changes everything. Mm. Like it's just this little touch. And so a lot of times you work on it over and over and over and then something sticks, something will click and I go, ooh, I got something. And then I'll stick with that. And then I start to mold around it. Um, and that's kind of how I came up with it. It was just a brainstorm really. You know, I, I think it's a very fetching design. I like it a lot. It's, a, it's, it's aggressive, but you can get away with it. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yes. So, so you mentioned that uh, you have Wee Knife working on your premium line. I'm, I'm sorry. I've, uh, I've forgotten what you call your premium line now. Uh, Damn it. Elite series is the Elite. premium line. And so like the Rhino is, is, is like in the middle. So this is, you know, say, the MSRP is 89, but mm -hmm. it's probably in the $70, 75, sometimes $79 range. Um, but best tech makes this, uh, oh. knife. So, so I okay. have best tech and I have, we, and uh, then dude. I do have another manufacturer that also handles a lot of big companies in Taiwan that, uh, that handle all the names that you know of already that don't manufacture knives under their own name. And so I partnered with those three that I feel are excellent. I mean, I mean, really, it comes down to once you put them out to market, if people leave those reviews and you get the emails, you'll know. You'll know fast. Is it, is well, it a winner or is it a loser? <laughs> I mean, so that's what I was going to get to next is that – you either like a design or you don't, or, or you look at a design, you think that's going to work with what I need. You know, if, if I'm an actual user or that's going to work with my collection or what my interests are, but you always want to know who's making your knives. And I was going to ask you, you know, you have, we best tech, my God. I mean, you're really in a, in a great, you have, we and best tech and then some other trusted manufacturer. Exactly. Um, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, if, well, that's what you want to do, because really what you're looking for are people to resonate with your designs. Right. And if they like your designs and then they know you've got a, a bona fide manufacturer behind you. Exactly. It, it seems like it's clear sailing. So uh, I, I have to mention my my favorite of your designs. You know, I've met, been talking about the, the Warren Cliffs and stuff, but Jim just threw up the rapid fire and I forgot. Yes, the rapid, the rapid fire. fire. The rapid yeah. fire. I love yeah. the rapid fire. So I uh, now these I'm keeping assisted. People really like when it, the reason it's called a rapid fire is this. It's mm. insanely fast. The torsion bar inside Beautiful. has a lot of tension on it. So when you fire it, it is serious business. So people love how it snaps out. It's really loud. <laughs> so it makes that big boom. You know, it's got yeah. that excellent bam. <laughs> 
I, I, I have to say, Carrie, that is an absolutely beautiful design. And Thank you. And whether or not it's made well, which I, I know it is, and yeah. and all of that, I, I, just looking at it, it is, it really like that to me is your, is is a great design. Nice, thank you. This one, geez, we sold out. You know, the whole Corona thing hit. Everything got delayed. The These what? got sold out. So like manufacturers weren't able to produce, and it was a disaster early in the year. So I'm still trying to get these back in stock, oh. but I'm this close. I'm this close to getting them back in stock. But I was going to show you since you brought up the rapid fire, a lot of people emailed me and uh, said, hey, why don't you make this oh, into a fixed blade? Yes. And I did. So here it is. So here's the oh, God. fixed blade version. I call it the back country. So I'll, I'll put them up next to each other here. So there it is. I got to say, man, that's even prettier. <laughs> that is even prettier. I love how yeah. you have a little bit more room to express the curves of those uh, of that blade. That is yeah. such a nice looking blade. And I really like the handle on the fixed blade too, because you have a bit of a swell towards the front, but it's not a groove that's forcing your, again, it's not forcing your finger into a yes. tiny channel. Exactly. It's a, that is a beautiful knife. So what's the steel on that? This one, I went with our D2 because- D2. Uh, you know, D2 is another one where I've fallen in love with it. It's really, it doesn't, uh, one, it's available. It's mm -hmm. easy to get. But two, there are different grades. And I make sure that the stuff that we use and the heat treatment that is done, uh, that it's premium. It's as good as you can make it. I mean, yeah. you can take, right? Well, and, it's a great choice for a fixed blade, too, because it's a tool steel. It's tough. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and yeah. So, Oh. This one is the Tracker X. So this was my first fixed blade. So it took a little while for me to jump into the fixed blade uh, market uh, because I just wanted to do it right. Mm -hmm. And I took my time and this is it. And it's really popular. People are loving it. I'm, I, I, I really can't keep up with demand at this point with this knife. People are going crazy with it. And <clears throat> it's micarta. So you have micarta instead of G10. Usually you got G10. Beautiful. So I got micarta yeah. here. I call it a snake skin because mm -hmm. that's what it looks like. And wide belly blade, you know, which is what I love. Simple. It's not, it's not, it's a no frills chopper, you know? So. So this design to me looks like it could be a really successful kind of jack of all trades crossover knife. Exactly. You know? exactly. And that's, that's how I, uh, market it is is basically saying, look, this is your bushcraft, this is your survival, this is your camp knife, you know. So mm -hmm. it kind of fell into those things. And once again, put it out to market. What do people say about it? If you go to Amazon or my uh, website, you know the reviews are there. People write some really good stuff, and so uh, very popular uh, so knife right there. That's what I that's what I want to get to next. What are you hearing back from from people who are buying your knives and using them? Uh, yeah. What kind of reviews? What kind of feedback? Uh, and and do these does feedback affect how you design in the future? Yeah, oh, hundred um, percent. And I early on, um, I, I I always said to myself early on, if this takes off, if this works, and I can really get this going, I'm going to make sure I communicate. With every with the buyer if the buyer wants to talk i'll talk you want to sell me something let's go and so uh that's important to me i even negative is fine go ahead what don't you like that's important so mm -hmm. you make those changes and that has definitely pushed me in certain directions is is you start to really hear uh, a common theme and once I start hearing a common theme, boom, I will follow <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> it's and, like when three girls tell you, you know, the same bad thing. It's like, right. it's not it's not them, it's me. <laughs> right, right. And so, uh, yeah, it's always, always good to get feedback. And I and I make it very uh, clear on the website. And, and we say that all the time in our customer service to, you know, chime in, email us. We love to hear from people. 
Uh, I got to say, I love that uh, whiteboard over your right shoulder with the yeah. diagrams and the and the and, and all the notes and stuff, yeah. and uh, and your logo over your left shoulder. Tell me a little bit about what Off Grid stands for. What's your yeah. overarching philosophy? Yeah, um, you know, I wanted to make the the whole thing. You know, going back to say like a Yeti. So I want to be the Yeti of the knife world, and so something that's tough and strong. And I used to use the term and I still do, you know, hey, this weekend we're gonna go off grid. That means you're gonna go hiking. That means you're gonna go fishing. That means, you know, it's something, everything's outdoors, right? So it conjures up outdoors, it conjures up survival. So off grid is everything away from civilization, right? And just surviving and being tough on your own, which the logo itself is actually a house. So you have a house, the flag is the window and the spikes are basically protected. you're off on your own. You're in the, in mm. the, you know, you're off grid and you built your shelter and it's, you know, I'm good. I survive. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's immediately what I think of is self-reliance off grid. Self-reliance. Okay. self-reliance. I can take care of myself as long as I have a good knife with me. And exactly. You know, several other things, but yeah, let's start with a good knife. Exactly. So that's really what, and so to, to pull the, the brand together with the camping, hiking, fishing, you know, uh, feel of the brand, um, I felt that was perfect. And frankly, I couldn't believe it wasn't taken off grid knives. Yeah. And when it wasn't, I can assure you, I jumped on it faster than you can imagine. So I got that sucker registered fast. You bought um, the name from some 12 year old kid for like 6,000. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of it. And I think it's it's forming into at this point, I've only been doing this now for four years and it's, it's moving very, very fast, but I'm trying to guide it uh, in an efficient way so that it improves um, with quality. I saw a lot of knife uh, guys early on when I was, and I would follow them and I would watch them and they would start cranking stuff out and their quality was bad. And I said, why are they doing this? They, they started out so well and they would cut corners to make more money. And I was like, they're done. They're And they disappear. They're gone. And so I'm doing the opposite. I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm going to spend more money. I'm going to make sure every single knife is quadruple checked, quality control, fit and finish. And then we finish it off with the lifetime guarantee and then customer service. So if you read our reviews, you'll always, someone will always mention our customer service. So it's, it's pretty cool. That's, that's really what I want it to be. Yeah. Well, I mean that, uh, to, to be able to listen to the customer and to be nimble and be able to change things when, when they need to be changed and to not, um, take offense when someone's like, well, I think right. this knife needs this or that, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think that's important. And, and obviously, I mean, you can tell from how you're talking that you're coming from a knife enthusiast point of view originally, right. yes. uh, obviously, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I think that that's what really uh, what people now expect, especially in the days of um, uh, sure. social media and such. Yeah. They expect people to hear things. I'm still old school. I'm like, hey, you left me a message a week ago. I, I'll get back to you. I got I got crows on it, you know, <laughs> right. but but. But people don't want that from their knife makers. They want uh, they want someone who's on. And we respond fat. People email us and they're shocked. We we get back to them like it's just immediate. And so that's that's very important to me. So what do you see Off Grid uh, doing in the future? How do you see uh, your company unfolding over time? What kind of designs do you want to make? What kind of company do you want to have in ten years? Yeah, that's, so it's a great question. Um, we're moving fast and at the same time like i was saying you know keeping it growing with quality and making sure uh i don't go too fast you can really get over your skis a little bit and that screws things up so i'm keeping you know just because you make more knives doesn't it, it's not always a good thing so i take each one individually to make sure that that particular one um take it slowly and listen and hear the people talk and give me that feedback and then go from there. But as far as where's it gonna go? I mean, I'm I'm really, this is my formula. I'm gonna stick to it right now, kind of see where it goes. I'm developing uh, my first product that I'm gonna, it's, it's a product that I want to, if I have it, um, 
it's more of something you would see on the shelf at say Bass Pro Shops, where everything right now, I, I make it because I know you're gonna get it in the mail. Mm -hmm. It's different. And so I'm, I'm developing a, it's like a survival camp kit. Oh. And so I, I, I have the packaging and the whole thing. So it's really, um, it's looking pretty good. I'm looking for it as we're done. Hold on, I'm gonna uh, grab it. Okay. Okay. Well, as you as you go and grab it, I think that's a very interesting take to not only um, be making and designing knives that are uh, intended for this sort of outdoor and and rugged use, but to create a whole pack. I mean, especially well, this day and age, a lot of people talk about preparedness and. Uh, it's funny because back in the day, you didn't have to talk about preparedness because you were just prepared. So you yeah. have some sort of a pack. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll, I'll wait on that. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, you know what? You'll, you'll come on again. You'll show us that. Definitely. Uh, um, but when yeah. that's, when that's ready. So I, I want to ask you one last question and, yeah. and uh, you and I, in our, in our correspondences uh, this afternoon, I alluded to this, but a lot of people I suspect who listen to and watch the show are, are like me have interests in knives that go beyond just collecting someday. I'd love to have a knife made that I've designed or this or that. So someone who is, who is more serious than I, uh, and, and hasn't quite gotten to where you are, what kind of advice would you give someone who's just starting out? Um, it really comes down to what, what do you really want? Do you want a knife company? If it's more of a hobby, that's different because it really does take a lot of time. You gotta be dedicated and there's gonna be problems and you have to become a problem solver. Solver. Uh, it's, it's you're constantly um, staying on top of the situation. I don't wanna be discouraging about it, but it's, 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 not, it's not something that's easy because one, you are dealing with uh, time change. You're dealing with Asia and you're dealing with language situations. Um, but ultimately it takes the, the, my advice would be this. You, you just start, you just do something. You have to take that first step. You're going to get punched in the face. You're going to get kicked and you have to just keep going. And then something's going to come up and then you get a bust through that wall and it's going to keep happening over and over. And you got to keep busting down each wall. And eventually, that knife will get made. If you really are determined, you will make it and it'll end up in your hand. It's like, wow, this is cool. Let's make a hundred. Let's sell them. <laughs> and then put them on Amazon. And uh, that's my recommendation is learn how to do Amazon because that's where the eyeballs are. And then uh, if you can grow it from there, that is uh, really the best place to start for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I've been taking notes, Carrie. So you'll be seeing DeMarco knives coming out uh, on Amazon nice. shortly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. I think Off Grid Knives is, uh, uh, I mean, you caught my attention long before I had your knife in hand. Wow. And uh, it, it, it was it was a concerted effort uh, with your push into, into Instagram, but also your designs resonated with me. And I thank think they you. resonate with a lot of people. And everyone wants something sturdy and durable for their money. And I think it's cool that you have three different kind of distinct tiers that you can get into an off-grid knife. Uh, knife uh, and, and I think it's awesome. So thank you. thank you for coming on the show. It's inspiring to hear your story. And yes. uh, it's been a pleasure, sir. Yes, this was really fun. Appreciate it. Next time. We'll, we'll hang out next time. Yeah, and we'll and we'll show off your your package survival kit at that point. It'll be ready to go at that time for sure. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Carrie. Right. Have a good All one. Right. Thank you. Are you looking for a book about knives or knife collecting, knives and self defense, or the yearly knife bible filled with hundreds of pages of information and pictures about your favorite knives? Shop at theknifejunkie.com slash books for your traditional favorites, new books about knives, and the yearly knife bible. Get your favorite knife book and support the show at thenifejunkie.com slash books. Who voiced that ad? That was awesome. Jim, we got to get this guy on the show. Find out who he is. I don't care what we have to pay him. I want him on the show. All right. Well, anyway, that was Kerry Orifice from Off Grid Knives. And uh, man, it was great to talk to him. Uh, like I mentioned, Off Grid 
kind of got me on a with a with a, a one two punch when they first came out when I first started not- noticing them a couple of years back, not only with a concerted uh, uh, social media presence but designs that were really resonating. And then when I started seeing uh, that he was involving we uh, in the manufacture of some of their knives, uh, I thought that's very interesting. This is a, uh, an American guy who's coming out with a, with a new line of knives, a new company, and it's on a graduated tier. And, and if you like his designs, you can get into his designs at any level or one of three. And I think that that's great. I love the whole communicating with the buyer concept. And this is a common theme we're finding in a lot of um, young knife companies and successful knife companies that have been around for a long time. They're nimble. They listen. They change when they need to change. Uh, they don't change with the, with the, uh, with the wind, but you know, it's like Harry said, you hear a preponderance of evidence that you need to change your thumb stud and you change your thumb stud because that's what people want. Um, Another great thing uh, that he mentioned was that when you start a business, and it doesn't matter if it's knives or anything else, you're becoming a professional problem solver, because owning a business is owning a big problem. But if you do it right, uh, it can bring you a lifetime of, well, satisfaction. Anyway, I just want to uh, say I'm very grateful I got a chance to talk with Kerry and uh, definitely check out Off Grid Knives. And I also want to thank uh, Dave, uh, this uh, uh, this old sword who got this in my hands, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for him. Anyway, Off Grid Knives, check them out. This is Bob, the knife junkie DeMarco, probably having spoken too long saying, Don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.